grateful for each and every one of you. Every one of you. Okay. Hopefully I'm not just going to be looking down all night, but I printed these out because I'm old school that way. <laughs> so I'm going to read these to you, and I got a lot of questions about the same things. So I'm going to kind of keep it, um, kind of answer them all in that same topic. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay, so our first question is, I was wondering if you take care, oh, do you have kids of your own and do you take care of them like you take care of us? <laughs> I do have kids of my own. They're grown up now. I have a son and a daughter and they're both grown up and um, with, when you're a parent, you never stop taking care of your kids. <laughs> you never stop worrying about them. So, I do try. I try to take care of them. Um, and I also have two grandkids. I have a grandson and a granddaughter. And they are getting pretty old themselves. <laughs> but, I'm super proud of all four of them. Okay. Okay, I got this a lot. Why did you decide to start your channel? And how did you get into ASMR? Well, ASMR, um, I actually found on Instagram first. I um, went through a period of time where I just I couldn't sleep. And I would watch sand cutting videos and um, soap cutting videos and even the videos where they um, squish uh, floral foam. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I started like that. And then I would talk about it with my grandkids and my kids. And then they would dip. My son told me about, he called them whisper ladies. He says, Mom, there's whisper ladies on YouTube. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and that's how I started watching ASMR. Um, and it was so cool to put a name to it because I did experience ASMR as a child and as an adult. And, um, people ask this too. What were your first ASMR experiences? The ones I remember is in school. Probably were just like a lot of us. Um, just as, but not all teachers, just a special teacher, the way that they read to you. I had a sixth grade teacher that would, um, and I've said this before, so I'm sorry if, if you've heard this before, but I had a sixth grade teacher who, um, right, we would come in from outside and go to lunch. Well, before we went to lunch, she would make us come in and sit down. She would turn out the lights and she would read to us and we had to put our heads down. And that was ASMR heaven for me. I looked forward to that part of the day every single day. And then, um, when I was in college, I had a professor, and I went to college when we mostly still had chalkboards. We had the chalkboards that would move, you know, would cover each other. And, um, he was a, a, a mathematic professor, and he was a retired astronaut. He was so smart. He was, like, way over my head. But he would come in with a bread wrapper full of um, washcloths, wet washcloths. And he would just slowly wipe down all the boards. Wouldn't even say, hello, how are you? He was just absolutely quiet. And of course, we were all very, very quiet. And that was ASMR for me. <laughs> so just things like that, which I think are probably pretty 
ASM artists, really, just watching them and um, the way that they make you feel and how creative they are. I just thought it would be so much fun. I read, um, I heard that you used to live in Turkey. Could you share more about living in Turkey? I lived in Turkey for two years. It was right out of college. Um, I taught Turkish at the American Turkish Association. I'm sorry, I taught English at the American Turkish Association. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. The Turkish people were so friendly to me. Um, I mean, just, it was just wonderful. I learned so much. I made, made so many friends. Um, just everything was so different than anything I had ever experienced in my life. Even though I did move around a lot, I mainly lived and moved around the United States. So it was just wonderful. And I encourage anyone who can ever visit Turkey to go. It was wonderful. Okay, let's see. Um, this one's so sweet. How does it impact you to know that you are a safe place for most of us who have a complicated relationships with our mothers slash caregivers? Um, it makes me feel very happy, very grateful. Um, it's really hard to put to words how I feel because I just feel like to know that you're helping someone is just, it's, it just is wonderful to know that you are, you have, your that's always what I wanted to do. Even when I taught, I wanted my classroom to be a place where the kids always felt comfortable. They weren't afraid to come to school. They didn't um, not want to come to school because, you know, they didn't feel comfortable. So it's always something I strive for. So um, it makes me feel very happy. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to put into words. But I'm very thankful. When you're making your eat baskets, what are your go-to items that you put in every time? I have quite a few um, basket videos, making basket videos videos and started with my Christmas ones because I make Christmas baskets for my neighbors. And um, I think in every basket making video I always put a candle, <laughs> some kind of snack, things like that. But I know candles, snacks, and Christmas, an ornament. <laughs> I, I love doing that. It's so much fun. What is your best advice for a newly qualified teacher? It's kind of about, um, kind of what I said before. Make every child in your class feel special. There's always children in your class who want to answer all the questions, who you spend a lot of time with, because that's just who they are. But also, make sure the one that's quiet that never says anything. Make sure they know that they are special and loved and smart in your classroom. Um, that's what I would say for a newly qualified teacher. I mean, I even had a little program when I taught that we just went down the row and every day one child was the line leader and the <laughs> my school, they would go to different classes together, each classroom. This was first and second grade. And um, the line leader was the one that always went to the any, any errands that needed to be ran. They took the role to the office, things like that. And um, I let everyone do it. Everyone got a chance. They knew that it was their turn. And um, the kids love that. Just to make sure everyone feels wanted and special. Um, if you could live anywhere in the world and money was no object, where would you live and why? I don't really know where, but I would live by the beach. <laughs> I love the beach. I um, was raised in Virginia Beach and in Pensacola, Florida, and I am just very happy at the beach. <laughs> 
ASMR channel. I do. Just do it. Just do it. You don't need anything special. Um, I started with just my phone and I didn't have a microphone. I just used my phone and I always knew I wanted to start a channel with a makeup video because I love those and I thought that I needed special makeup. I'm like, I don't have all this cool makeup like some of these people do and like, just use what you have. Don't spend any money. Just use what you have and start your channel. <laughs> also, another thing I did was I watched videos, ASMR videos from other creators um, talking about how to start your own ASMR channel. Watch those videos. I watched Chibi's and I watched Maria's. Both are very good. What are some other hobbies you have besides ASMR? I love to read. I love to read. I love uh, plants. I'm always growing plants. I love um, house plants and then I love to garden. Um, I also like to, this sounds funny, but I, I like to work out. I like to um, walk. I love walking early in the mornings. Just things like that. I like to swim. How did you decide to become a teacher? And what was your favorite part? I wanted to be a teacher when I was little. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. When I was in school, though, I was in school in the 80s. I was in college in the 80s, and there was, like, there was a lot of um, business then. So I thought, you know what? I don't want to be a teacher. This is before I started teaching. I want to um, be a businesswoman. So I got my business degree, and um, it was fun, but I didn't feel fulfilled. <laughs> so I started teaching. I became a certified teacher, and I'm really glad I did because it was really my calling. And I just, my grandmother taught Sunday school, and I used to always help her. She took it very, very seriously. She always practiced her lesson on me, and I think my love for teaching came from her, from my grandmother. Uh, my favorite part of teaching are the children. I miss these kids every day. I love being in the classroom with the children and the funny things they say and, and to see them take what you've taught them and they turn it into something way greater than I ever taught them. I mean, children are so smart. Do you have any favorite ASM artists? I love them all. <laughs> I love them all. I watch ASMR every single night. Every single night, even when I'm on vacation, I watch ASMR. And if I if I can, sometimes I'll watch it even during the day. Um, I love them all. I I go to um, you know I was really inspired by Maria. You know, love Maria. Um, I watched Maria when she was I think on Buzzfeed. And I was so impressed with her, and I started always watching her, but I watch everyone. I, I just, I, I just search for ASMR, and I go through my feeds, and YouTube is really good about showing me people that, um, I didn't know before, and I love that. I'm always like, well, how did I not know about this ASMR artist? <laughs> oh, um, here's another question about being a teacher. Which grade I've taught to kindergarten through sixth grade. I spent many, many years teaching. Um, I taught kindergarten first and second the most. I taught first grade in the morning and second grade in the afternoons, and I taught phonics um, for most of my teaching teaching time. Is I taught phonics. I taught them to read and. 
maybe 15, 20 people coming to like 40, 50 people coming. So we have a good time. I love to go places I haven't been before. I really, I just love to see how people live. Um, I did, someone asked about Sedona. I did go to Sedona this past fall. Loved Sedona. Loved it. And um, everything I told you about Sedona in my videos, uh, that was real. I bought lots of lots of crystals there. Um, the atmosphere, you know, I, <laughs> I read all about it, the vortexes and everything. And um, I can't say um, we took our shoes off like you're supposed to and it did feel different. Um, it's the, the whole feeling in Sedona to me was just, I was just very happy why I was there. Very happy. If you haven't been, go. It was wonderful. And we went, it was, we were there on Halloween and we stayed um, a week. We came back and then we went back the week of Thanksgiving. My daughter had a house there for the whole time. And um, it was so much fun and just gorgeous. It would be hot during the day, but very cold at night. And that was so fun. Okay. <laughs> how did your family react to you starting an ASMR channel and how has it affected them? I, um, a lot of you wanted to know if I told everyone. I told my husband, my children, and my grandchildren. And they were very supportive. Oh, my grandkids loved it. Loved it. They, they told me, you know, all kinds of things to do. Join TikTok, do Twitch, which I didn't do those. But, um, I wished I had of. But, um, and if I would get messages I didn't understand, I always asked my grandkids. <laughs> so, um, very supportive. And people have asked about editing my videos. I started out trying to edit, and um, my husband edits for me now. He's much better at it. He's really good. And um, I just appreciate him so much. My family's been so supportive. Now my siblings and my my mom, um, I told my sister first, I told her when I, I, I probably had maybe 600 followers, and I told her not to tell anyone. <laughs> I said, just wait, and, you know, because I never dreamed, I never dreamed that, um, I would ever get a uh, 100k, so, um, but my brother found out about it. And he called me on the phone, and he, he, he's like, I answer the phone, and he's like, Ray, this is your brother. And he was whispering to me, and I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> and then I realized he had seen my ASMR channel, and one of, it, one of my nieces had found it and told him about it. And he said, at first I was worried about you. <laughs> At first I was worried about you, but now I realize you're helping people, which was very sweet. So my family has been very supportive. Um, a lot of you asked, do they watch it? I don't think so. Now my kids and my grandkids, they will. And my husband has to because he edits for me. But I don't think my, any of my siblings watch it. My sister might sometimes. I, I may say, hey, have you heard this? I think if I, if I um, just used a regular voice, they would watch it more than whispers. Whispers. Um, what are your hopes and dreams for the future? Well, my hopes and dreams for this channel is just to be able to keep making videos and for you guys to watch them. I had so much fun. I love doing it. I love doing it. And I love, love, love getting to 
what makes you comfortable. If you're comfortable in it, if you like the way you look in it, wear it, and with makeup as well, because um, I learned that teaching, with it being a teacher, you're on your feet all day, and you're just constantly moving, you don't sit down, and um, especially with when you teach little kids, and um, I had to feel good, I had to be able to move around with the kids, but then when a parent came in, I didn't want to look at tacky either. So, uh, I learned that if I didn't feel good in it, don't wear it. Don't wear it. And then my other is just stay out of the sun. Protect yourself in the sun. <laughs> I come from when we didn't know better and it was terrible. Have you visited many countries? And if so, what was your favorite? I haven't visited a lot. I've been to Mexico, um, Germany, Turkey. Greece, Italy, Spain. I think that's it. I haven't been. And they're, they're all my favorite. I love going. I have a soft spot for Turkey because I lived there. Um, but they're all my favorite. I just love going where people are different than I am because you learn so much. It's so interesting to see the way different people live. And that's states, too. I love going to different states. When you think of a new ASMR technique to present, do you test them on other people or yourself first? Um, I guess really myself, when I'm trying something new, I will do it in front of my camera and make sure it's going to work. Or, you know, sometimes I'll set up a whole thing and I'll try it and it doesn't work the way I want it to. So I do try it first, I guess in front of myself. I don't ever try it with anybody else. I don't really have anyone in my life, <laughs> this is sad, that is uh, really into ASMR. Just you guys. So I love talking to you and knowing what you like and watching other ASMR videos. Um, how did you start making mom videos? And how do you keep yourself positive in difficult times? I, um, I think I started with mom videos. I think my first video was a friend. A friend does your makeup. And then so many of you guys called me your mom, your grandma. I was like, I love that because that's what I am. I'm a mom. I'm your grandma. I mean, even as a teacher, you're a mom all day long to the little ones. And you're and to the older ones, you're a role model. So, um, I just, it was because of you guys that I did that. And I love it. I loved it. And keeping myself positive in difficult times. Um, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. And I have to, um, I, when I know that I'm not being positive, I make myself, this sometimes it's easier than others, I don't want it to sound like it's so simple because it's not always, but it's not always so hard either, is I just make myself get up. I make myself get up, get dressed, look your best, do what you like. Um, getting outside of my house, by walking in the park makes me extremely happy and I love walking in the mornings when hardly anyone's there and the animals are out and the sun's rising. It changes my mood for the entire day. Now when I was working, um, you know, I couldn't do that, but just going to, uh, one of the reasons I love teaching, it was the only job I ever had that I didn't, I always wanted to go to. I always wanted to go to my teaching, <laughs> my teaching job. <laughs> I always wanted to go to work when I was a teacher. So, so just, just, um, be around people that are positive. Anyone that takes a positivity out of you, stay away from them when you can. My husband helps me a lot too. You know, it's, um, when he can tell I'm not at my best. He's very sweet to me. Okay. 
supposed to be three parts so you'll have to check that out um I love what a TV show I've been watching right recently is Dark Winds Dark Winds it's on AMC love it I loved the first season and the second season just started just started books um I love to read I read all the time I go through periods where I'll read like just UFO books. I love UFO and I got a lot of UFO questions coming up. Um, and then I'll read biographies. I love, um, and then I'll read, fi I love fiction. Love to read fiction. So, um, I was reading the Valerie Bertinelli book. I also read The Queen, which was really good. It went through all through her life. I loved that book. I used to really love to read kind of like true crime books. Haven't haven't been um, haven't read any in a while, but I, I really do just love to read kind of all fiction. Um, your role plays are truly amazing. Thank you. Did you have a drama background, or were you a drama teacher? I don't really have a drama background, and I was not a drama teacher. But every year, my first graders put on a play, and I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot um, doing the play every year. It was always a big deal. It was the last month of school, like a week before school was out. We had been on this big production, and um, I learned a lot doing that because I studied it. And then teaching summer camp, did a lot of drama in summer camp with my kids. So I was never really a drama teacher, but my daughter was big into drama, and I listened a lot when I would take her to her plays. So I learned a lot through my daughter. Um, thank you for saying that I um, I talked to you at the camera. I guess that's something you really you really have to learn to to do that. Okay, I love I love hearing this. I absolutely love your alien theme videos. Have you ever visited Area 51 or anywhere similar? Similar. <laughs> That's a word I have a hard time saying. I have. I have visited Area 51 once. I've been to Roswell like three times. Um, thank you for my alien, like in my alien videos. I have so much fun when I do those. They're not, a lot of people don't watch them, but those of you who do are very sweet about it. And, and I get it because aliens are not relaxing to everyone. <laughs> my daughter doesn't ever like me to talk about aliens, but my son does. So my son and I are always back talking about aliens. <laughs> um, what first sparked your interest in aliens? Um, it just interesting to me. Aliens are very interesting to me, and um, I've never had an alien experience. I would love to, as long as it's in a distance, you know, seeing one from a distance. But I love learning about it. I love reading about other people's experience. So I have lots of alien books, lots of them. Okay. And thank you for liking my alien videos. How did you and your husband meet, and how long have you been together? We've been together a really long time, since we were in high school. <laughs> but you know, it goes by like that. I mean, I really feel like we've been married so long, but it doesn't feel that way. <laughs> we met in high school. We were in study hall together, and he would stare at me. I was new. Uh, my dad was in the military, so we moved all the time. I've told you guys that before in other videos, and um, I was new, and he would he was asking people who I was, and um, I'd have people come up and say, hey, do you know so-and-so? He likes you. <laughs> I mean, really, school stuff. And so we were in study all together, and he asked me if he could draw me for his senior project. He's, he was an artist. And then he asked me out, and then he asked me to prom, and that's how we met each other. So, um, so we're still together from high school, so it's kind of cool. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's another one about aliens, sorry. 
my dad, you know, I, my dad passed away about five years ago, and I would love to have the, to, to talk to all of them. I really would. My great grandmother was a Native American. Would love to talk to her about her experience, her experiences. So sorry if that's a cop out, but that's that's who I want at my dream dinner party. Okay, let's see. Um, what's your favorite animal? Uh, besides dogs, elephants. <laughs> I love elephants. I don't know why, I just love them. Um, my favorite, my favorite kind of music growing up versus now. Um, I used to really like pop. Um, not so, I'm not, not, I love all music. I'm not a huge country fan. But my dad, he played, um, he was a huge country music singer. He, he loved singing country music, and he would sing me to sleep. Um, and I love every song that he would sing me to sleep with. He would play his guitar, and he would sing to me, me and my sister, when we go to sleep. Those are my favorite um, it's the only country music I really listen to, and I listen to every other kind of music. Um, in the 90s, I was really into grunge. Probably surprises you. Um, and I still listen to it. I love 70s, 80s, and 90s music. To your younger self, what would you say? Um, to my younger self, I would say, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. You spend a lot of time worrying when you're younger. Um, and I would just say, just do it. Everything's going to be okay. What would you give a 19-year-old in college and experiencing a life? Same thing. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. And if you want to do it, do it. I spent, I spent a lot of time, always, um, a lot of time when I was younger, worrying about if, if I should do this, if I shouldn't do this, what would my parents think, and things like that. And, you, you know, if you want to do it, it's something that's not going to hurt you, but it's a, maybe a way you want your life to go, do it, try it. You'll be glad. Um, how are the baby ducks? <laughs> I got a lot of questions about the ducks. Oh, these ducks. I love them so much. I mean, I felt like I was, um, I felt like we helped this duck so, through so much. <laughs> and let me tell you, as soon as those ducks were born, she left. <laughs> she took them, and they went under the fence, and they went to the park. And, um, I've seen them at the park. And she had her ducks, she had her ducklings late, later, so she was the only duck at the park with the ducklings. And the last time, I, I was, I hated to go and see because I, I've seen duck family slowly just drop down to one duck, and I, I just didn't think I could handle it because our duck at our park has coyotes and bobcats. And, um, I mean everything, raccoons, everything that would hurt a baby duck. Um, uh, we have foxes. But, happily, she had seven the last time I've seen them, and they were almost as big as her. You could just tell that, um, they, because of their feathers. And I have not seen them probably since the 1st of July. So I think they have, because they can fly after, what, four weeks? So I think they're, they're gone. But I had so much fun with those ducks. <laughs> um, and this was a person asking me if I was nervous to post videos on my ASMR um, channel at first. And I was terribly, terribly nervous. The only thing that makes you feel better is you think that no one that knows you this was me anyway. No one that knew me, knew me would see them. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Okay, let's see if I have any. Oh, I'm going to have to tell my 
husband this one. How do you get no background noises? <laughs> Thank you very much for saying that because I feel like I have so much background noise, but we try really hard for no background noise. Um, I have to film during the day, so um, I have a school very close to me, and I'm always picking up the playground. So I work really hard of trying to film when the kids are not outside. <laughs> and um, just editing, but thank you, because I do hear things in the background. Um, I did watch the UFO hearing, and I thought it was wonderful. Loved the UFO hearing. I even um, listened to it on podcasts, who replayed it. So, what did you think about it? Okay, um, I have questions about my favorite things to bake, or your favorite things to cook. Um, I, I love to cook. I love to bake. Um, I love to, I love to bake pies at Thanksgiving. <laughs> I do. My family loves buttermilk pie that my grandmother used to make. And, um, that's probably one of my favorite things because everyone loves it. Also, I, um, I like to cook for my family. So, I love to cook dinner and have everyone sit down and eat. It's just, um, it's just such a pleasure to cook for them because they like it. Um, what's your favorite childhood memories? I have so much. I have so, so many. Um, I just recently had one. I'll tell, I'll tell you about when I was little. It was, I was really little because I'm the oldest. And my um, sister's two years younger than me. And so either my sister, either I was, she wasn't born yet. Or um, she was too little to go trick-or-treating. It's the only Halloween I remember without her. And I was Casper. Casper the friendly ghost. <laughs> Some of you may have seen my Casper cup on Instagram. So I was Casper. And I was, it was just me and my mom, and we were trick-or-treating, and we were on the porch, knocked on someone's door, and this other mom and little girl came up, and she was afraid of me because I was Casper, <laughs> and I could not understand why she was friendly, why she was worried and scared about me, because I was like, I kept saying, but I'm the friendly ghost, and she wasn't having it, she started crying. <laughs> That was, that's, I think is so funny. That's, but I have lots of childhood memories. Let's see if I have any more that I have not answered. Okay, here's, I think here's one. What parts of the U.S. have you lived in? Um, I was born in Texas, so I've lived in Texas. I currently live in Texas, but I've lived in Oklahoma two different times. I've lived in Louisiana. Mississippi, um, Florida, and um, Virginia. I've lived in Virginia. Those are the only states I've lived in. I've visited a lot of other states than that. So make sure I got everything. So those are the only states I've lived in. Um, spent a lot of time in Texas, Florida, and Virginia the most. So let me see. What's your zodiac sign? I'm in Aries. Um, what's your favorite color? I love all colors, but I love green. Um, oh, what did I study at school? I kind of touched on that. I, I was a business major. <laughs> 